Now we're ready to get started with Amber Light 2, give you a quick walkthrough, give you a quick review on the software and how we feel actually it's best to use and what all the features and things that you can do in a quick overview. Uh, now, first of all, like in any other program, you can always choose your image size and from a preset here up to 4K, you have all these kind of formats. Please consider and be aware the higher you go, the more CPU power, the better your computer has to be. So in order to get started and get yourself familiar with the software, I suggest to put a custom size in your device, 600 by 400 or something similar in that manner. Also, if you use American format, use 30 frames per second here, we in the Europe, we use 25 frames per second, keep that in mind. And if you keep a playback looping on that means it's going to repeat those rendering process over and over so you get a better review and you'll have to restart the whole thing background color can be chosen between black white and any other color or transparency uh, we leave it to black for now and once this is set the basic settings are done and we can actually click ok and get started we already see what's going to happen in the software it actually started the rendering process here on the left top we see a number all counting up to 5000 now if you want to change that and make it a little more easier easier, bring it up to a thousand, let's say, just type in the number that you decide to want. You see things that keep changing faster and this rendering actually is as well. Now, in order to keep it more simple and understand what's going on behind the scenes, I suggest we simplify that by just simplifying the fields that are actually interpreting right now. If you click on the screen, you have four circles here and each circle interprets a field. That's basically how the fact is generated. And we can reduce that number by simply clicking on the left top here on the field minus button that reduces them and bring it all the way to one. I think that's a good way to show you how that program really works and how uh, it affects all these parameters and things that you can change in the software. So once this is set to one, actually you scale this up or down, which affects the algorithm and the particles around it. And I have a couple other options, such as setting the contrast and <coughs> this slider here. So it's a program that actually requires you to experiment quite a bit in order to become creative and get started with it. So play around with it and see what actually you can get out of that software really. Now, as I saw in the videos, these demo videos, these cool things, these are pretty hard to do, We're playing around quite a lot and got some of the results, but you got to spend some time with it and actually uh, to get really, really interesting looking results out there. Another thing here is whenever there's too much information going on the screen here, that you got to bring down your alpha mask here on the filters panel on the left side, more to the bottom. Uh, that actually reduces a little bit all the cluttering and all the things that are going on around. Uh, so when you bring this highly up, you see everything is full and you might want to have it easier and bring it all the way down to a level where you say, oh, that looks cool. So now you also have the option to change colors here on the right here. And we tried that and we actually played around a little bit with that options here. Let's choose something that we feel it's interesting for now. Um, right. So yeah, let's keep this for now. And um, we also have a lot of other options and modifiers here. We can kind of distort that much more. And actually we do that by changing and adding a waveform here. We can bring that to square, for example. Let's create a pretty cool effect here. And we can actually increase the amplitude. That actually distorts it even more. So we can create here really interesting effects. As you see, the rendering still keeps going and going. So it's all the time on here. Uh, also changing the frequency will affect the image. So we got to see what's the outcome bring it all the way up, for example, you see it gets bigger and wider. Now, if you think this is too bright again, bring the alpha mask just down. So we actually can just actually really focus on what we want to see. If you bring it all the way up, you see the whole screen is a mess. It has just too many things going on, particles are all over. So we just bring it to the level where we are comfortable and we like the effect here. We can tint it as well. It actually affects the background image here. We can choose our own colors that we like to see here and we can add a little color to that. Um, on top, you have a couple other options here. You can actually change the variations, which also affects the whole image. As you can see, it starts building up, for example, and we can actually change also the numbers. Now, if you bring this to one here, and you'll see suddenly the image freezes. So nothing is going on since there's no change actually. So no variation means the image is pretty much rendering as you can see on the left top, but there's no change here. So really a change is affected by the number here and by the increase of the variation you do. So if you add just a little, you will see a little change here. So 
bringing up the scale as well has some effect. So that gives you a basic idea. I'd really start with that, but it gets really interesting when you add fields here. When you add fields, actually you create kind of an interference with them, and that actually creates some stunning effects that you've probably seen in the videos here. As I say, it takes quite some time to actually create these effects since there's no real controller out there and no preset where you can simply just regenerate them. But that's actually how this is done. And you basically bring it all the way up here to create some stunning effects. So again, bring the alpha mass up or down where you feel like the information that you want to display is best. If you like change color, change the entire color here. Whatever you feel looks cool. And they're ready to go. We can even black and white and the grayscale. So yeah. So that's how it works. You can keep adding fields. Keep in mind, it takes more CPU power here again. So whatever you add, you can change each individual field and change the parameters here to create even more stunning effect. And on top of all that, you have another option. You have a little animator download like a key raised uh, frame timeline at the bottom here where you can create effects with each of the fields. Unfortunately, you cannot create animations and sliders here with the modifiers, with the contrast curve and the filters, but you can affect all the fields here. And what that does, let me show you this here a little. If you start, for example, very small out here, bring that a little down here, um, also that one down here. So let's say this is our first image here and bring the alpha mask down a little bit. So let's say now you want to scale that circle up here, that field up here. You can do that by simply sliding this red slider here on the left all the way to the right where you want it. Now keep in mind we're using 25 frames per second. That means that interprets a second here. Now if you want to start here and making a change at second number two, we go all the way to 50. That means at 50 frames here should actually scale up. And we only need to set the end frame here actually really. It does everything for us in between here. We'll scale it up. So we just bring it all the way up at position number 50. And now we already have our animation set. So when we go back you will see it creates all the in-betweens here in order to scale this field up. Now we can play that. If we press space you will see that has the effect here and creates a desired result. Now we can also do that, changing the other sliders here. Let's say we add another 25 frames, another second basically. We go to 75 here and change some of these sliders here now. Bring this a little up and this up a little bit and see what happened now. So now we want to see that again, go all the way back here, press space, and you will see that is actually changing as well. So that's a pretty cool thing, more advanced for you if you're not familiar with the timeline and keyframes such as in Flash or in Maya or any other program. It has this function here too, very basic, but it works. So last here I want to show, you can also import images here. How that works is you go to the file menu, click on import image, and you can actually add any image that's on your computer. Uh, in my case, let's just bring in the background uh, and just see how that works. I can actually scale that up as well and just say, uh, just want to see, let's say we just want to see the blue here. This is our review background we use. And uh, once we're done, we just click OK or enter. And we actually have a background now. Now we can turn it on and off on the right bottom. As you see, you can also turn off the effects layer from amber light, or you can even turn off the background layer that actually shows the transparency. So uh, you can change the numbers, of course, of this too, to make it actually more interesting. And this is almost like a gradient, so we can add that to this effect. And we have some blending options, what we know from Photoshop, some basic options, lighten or darken. Uh, so you can combine that and actually add your own images. And once you're ready, press space, you have created now a complete project in Emberlight with animations, with a timeline, with keyframes, as well as all the changes that we made here with a background. I think that gives you a broad overview of what the, what the program is capable. Now, our verdict here is this software has a lot of features to play around with. It doesn't have a very well documented actually description. There are no tutorials out there that could really find, especially those ones would be wonderful to have that actually show how these uh, these uh, animations uh, effects are created from this uh, demo video that's actually online that looks pretty stunning. It would be well 
well uh, really welcome if there would be presets here somewhere in the menu where we can choose from and the, the numbers and things just sent to the preset that we show and see in this video as well as some more tutorial material out there what is really going on behind the scenes the algorithms and things to give us a better interpretation what is going on other than that I would say uh, it's all up to your freedom play around with all that sliders and get yourself familiar start small and as I said once you get too heavy just to reduce the alpha mask and just start with smaller numbers in order to get yourself familiar well I hope this gives you a basic idea what AMOLED is for we believe it is a lot for videographers, people who make effects and shows and all kinds of things and want to have additional content, even for video DJs and people that want to have actually add-ons to your music or create things that you see on the website. You can of course not just have videos exported, you can of course also export still images and the way to do this is also very simple. If you want to export uh, just images, just click on File Export Image. If you want to export the whole animations that we just created with the timeline, and you go to Scene, Render, Animation, that will render that in the project. And if you want to export it to your screen and save it in a file format, you have different options here to click that from a movie file, from a QuickTime file to AV, AV a PC format, or even the still images, you can do that same way here with a couple other choices, including setting the quality and the codec, as well as how long you want to export here from your entire project. Keep in mind to double check always that in order to make sure it's not going to render forever or you don't even need that many seconds or that much of a project and frames here. And once you're done, you just click on render and actually the project is rendering and your first project has been exported. Well, thank you so much for watching this review of Amberlight 2. Thank you also to the developers. I hope you also got a good idea what kind of improvements are would be welcome actually to have in the next version, in the next update, as well as what are the cool things that you can do here with all this uh, cre creative ways, because all these parameters and things that you can change in the project in order to create new great visual content. Thanks a lot and see you in one of our other reviews.